Hello, in this video, we'll see how we can use analog signals at PLC input output. So, after a short introduction, we'll see some points of hardware configuration and programming about analog signals in TIA software. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content I have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Alright, until now, we have done many projects with digital inputs outputs. In the beginning of this tutorial, we have explained PLC hardware and its wiring. We know digital sensors or push buttons have two states, on or off, or open and close. These instruments use 0 and 24 volt DC, to send their states to PLC. Also we could use 0 or 24 DC, to turn on off a digital output, such as the signal lamp. On other side, there are many devices, such as these two level, and flow meter transmitter, and also some actuator, which are using analog signals, for example a voltage between 0 to 10 volt. Other basic signals are minus 10 to 10 volt, 0 to 20 mA, 4 to 20 mA and also other type signals. To store and use these signals in the PLC program, we need more than 1 bit, usually 16 bits. Let's see an example. Suppose, we have a level transmitter to measure level of a substance, such as weed. This transmitter can be tuned, to generate a voltage 0 to 10, appropriated 0 to 50 meter. PLC can receive the signal. See here, this is S7-1200 programmable controller manual of Siemens company. At this manual, you can find your S7-1200 CPU. This is a diagram of my CPU wiring. As you see my CPU support two analog inputs. Now pay attention to this table which show, measurement ranges of the analog inputs for voltage signal. Based on this table, negative values are not supported. For zero voltage, my CPU give me zero and for 10 volt, give me this number, 6C00 hexadecimal number which is equivalent to 27648. Or if we receive this number at the program, it means the voltage at the PLC input is this. So, we'll have these numbers, respectively 0 to 10 volt at the PLC input. Now, I'm going to write a function to show the substance level, which is from 0 to 50 meter, based on received analog signal. Let's create a new project from first. Here click on configure a device to define our PLC station. This is my CPU. You can select this item to determine your CPU later. Select your CPU, to see its details at the bottom window. As you see, my CPU supports 8 digital inputs, 6 digital outputs, and 2 analog inputs, with name channel 0 and channel 1. For example, this the address of channel 0, 
IW64. So this channel use 16 bits of PLC input memory. It just support voltage signal from 0 to 10. Now, let's write a function to use this channel. Click on main block, OB1. Click on add new block. As you know, we have used function without any memory. Also we have seen how to use data block to store data. If we need a function with a memory, we must use function block. Now, let me have a short explain of organization block. Until now, we have started our programming from main block OB1. OB1 is executed cyclically, and is the main block of the program. This is where you place the instructions that control your application, and call additional user blocks. As you see, here is a listed of other organization block. For example, start up OB will execute one time, when the operating mode of the PLC changes from stop to run. After completion, the main block, OB1, will begin executing. Or this OB, time of day, is started either once at a specific time or periodically. OK, let's continue. Select function and write a suitable name. Alright, the first input of this function, is from the analog channel. For 0 to 10 volt, this channel give me an integer number from 0 to 6C00, Base on hexadecimal format. Next inputs are lower and upper value of level sensor measurement, which will be 0 to 50 meter for this project. Here, I define two outputs. The first one will show the level of substance. And the next one, error output, will check the range of measurement. Also, I define an internal memory to use that in my program. OK, at the first network, I'm going to use outrange instruction to activate error output. If the input measurement is not between 0 and 27648, the error output will be on. Because the measurement value is not on its rated range. At the second network, first, I use norm instruction to convert measurement to a number between 0 and 1.
Now, I'm going to use a scale instruction, to convert previous result to a number between 0 to 50. I'll give this numbers with lower and upper values, which are defined as function inputs. Now, let me use this function in the main block, OB1. Alright, first, I write analog input address. Then I define 0 and 50 as my desired range. At the output part, I can use PLC memory to store function results. Let's extend this program. Alright, we're going to learn, how an analog output module can be defined, and used in TIA software. Then we're going to turn on an electrical valve with 16 mA, if the level is less than 5 meter. My CPU doesn't have any analog outputs. So I need to use and modify my hardware in TIA software. So, I click on device configuration, and find my analog output module from the right list. As you see, the inserted module supports voltage and current signal. I need current signal from 4 to 20 mA. This address, QW96, is my first analog output address. Before starting programming, let's find measuring range table of inserted module. As you see, to have 4 and 20 mA, I need to send 0 and 27648 to the output address. To have 16 mA, I need to send this number. So let's start programming. Alright, at the second network, if the level is less than 5, then the move instruction send number 27648 to analog output. Otherwise it will be 0 to have 4 mA at the output.
Let's test this program with sim table. Alright, this is my program, and this is my function. Here, pay attention to insert min and max value correctly. Let's test the program with sim table. These are used tags in my program, level sensor, electrical valve, level, and error. As you see, when the level is less than 5, the electrical valve is on with this number. Also when level is greater than 50, my program activate the error memory. Now, let's test the previous function with a real analog input. Here, I have used IW66 as my analog input address. Pay attention, my CPU supports two analog inputs. My analog input's addresses are IW64 and IW66. I have used the second analog input in my program which receives a voltage between 0 to 10. Here are my two analog inputs connections. The second one is connected to this potentiometer. So, this function receives the analog input, and convert it to a number between 0 to 10. And, its output shows the voltage, at the analog input. As you see, with the potentiometer, I can change the voltage at the analog input, and show its value at the function output. Also, like the previous simulation, when the input voltage exceeds 10 volts, the second output, error, is activated. Also, I have written a simple program to test my analog output. With this program, I can transfer three numbers to my analog output address, which makes to appear a voltage at my PLC output. As you see, my analog output module gives me two analog outputs. I have used its first analog output which its address is QW96. I've connected the analog output to this voltmeter, to show its voltage. Alright, with these three contacts, we can transfer three numbers to the analog output, which based on Siemens documents, will generate 10, 7.5, and 0 volts at my analog output. Let's test them. Pay attention, now, two contacts are activated. So, based on the program, first, CPU decides to generate 7.5 volts at the output, but at the next line, change its decision, and transfer 0 to the output. So when the second and third switches are activated, the analog output will be 0 volts. Alright, we have reached the end of this video. In the next video, we'll do a simple project with factory I.O. to learn work with analog inputs outputs. Thanks for watching my content. If you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.